Welcome back, everybody, to 31 1980s horror movies for Halloween, where I'm counting down my favorite horror movies from the 1980s. At number 16, we had something more fun and lighthearted. At number 15, we got something very disturbing, uh, and that is Henry, Portrait of a Serial Killer. I'd like to kill somebody. Say that again. I'd like to kill somebody. That's mean you go for a ride, Otis. The two subgenres in the horror genre that scare me the most are anything to do with water and serial killer movies. I almost drowned, so I'm terrified of drowning, and serial killers... the idea of serial killers frightens me. Serial killer movies play on what I think is one of the scariest ideas, and that is you don't know what people are like behind closed doors. Because the thing about serial killers is... With all the monsters of mythology and film, you know, some people think they're real, some people don't think they're not real with all that. Most of them only exist in fiction. But serial killers are a monster that is real. And serial killers blend in with society. Pumpkinhead is not going to blend into society. The killer clowns are not going to blend into society. But a serial killer will. If you shoot somebody in the head with a 45 every time you kill somebody, it becomes like your fingerprints, see? But if you strangle one and stab another, and when you cut up, when you don't, then the police don't know what to do. You look at every serial killer that has existed throughout history, most of them lived among people. Jeffrey Dahmer lived in an apartment complex and he killed people in that apartment complex. John Wayne Gacy lived in suburbia. It takes the idea of most horror movies and it brings it a little too close to home. Because, again, anybody could be a serial killer. Someone you're, you pass by every day of the week could be a serial killer. Susie! So, Henry, Portrait of a Serial Killer, is inspired by real-life serial killer Henry Lee Lucas. Now, the thing about Henry Lee Lucas is he was arrested for two murders, and then while he was in custody, he started confessing to other crimes, and then you had these people bringing him files for cold cases, and he would confess to those murders, and they were able to close hundreds of cold cases because they were able to pin the murders on Henry Lee Lucas, but then it would it turned out that he was lying about that because people found out, okay, you couldn't have killed these people at this time in this state and be in this state killing people at the exact same time. So basically, Henry was lying about all these other murders, and the it when it finally got down to, you know, what was real, he uh, the only murders we know that for certain that he committed were two. Two murders. That's the basics of it. The, the real story is uh, is more interesting and there's more details and if you watch other movies on it or other videos on it you'll get a lot more information out of it. Anyway, Henry Portrait of a Serial Killer is based on the fantasy part of the Henry Lee Lucas case. What Henry Lee Lucas claims to have done. What's gonna happen when they find those bodies? Nothing. What do you mean, nothing? That's what I said, Otis, nothing. Nothing's gonna happen because nothing happened. And I don't know nothing about it, whatever it is. Do you? And the thing about Henry Portrait of a Serial Killer is the opening sequence sets you up for what kind of movie you're gonna get into. The violence in here is not flashy, it's just raw. And for me, raw violence in a horror movie can be incredibly effective. It's sometimes even more effective than over-the-top flashy violence. Don't get me wrong, I love my over-the-top flashy violence, but raw violence works better in certain movies. There are times where you will see a crime scene. You'll see the body of a woman that Henry murdered, and the camera will slowly move around the body. We won't see the murder, we'll just see the aftermath. And as the camera moves around the scene, we get more details and more... 
so we we get more details to the scene and put together in our mind what happened. The opening sequence to Henry Portrait of a Serial Killer and those scenes where we see the aftermath of what Henry did, it kind of reminded me of Seven. You remember in Seven, all the kills in Seven happened off screen, and then you would, you would see the crime scene afterwards and you would get more details as the movie goes on. So you would get the details and arrange in your mind what the victim went through. It's the same thing in at the very least, the opening of Henry Portrait of a Serial Killer. We get more, we don't see the murder, but we get more details to the murder and then piece together in our minds what the victim went through. So we have the character of Henry played by Michael Rooker, and this is his best performance and it's also one of the most frightening performances in horror. If you were to do a ranking of the most popular horror movie villains, you would have characters like Freddy, Jason, Michael, but if you were to do a, a ranking of the scariest horror movie villains, Henry would be up there. Don't do that, Otis. She's your sister. Okay, I was only kidding around, Henry. Tell her you're sorry. Okay, I'm sorry. Now, tell her you won't do it again. I won't. He, he's a drifter who goes around doing odd jobs, and he murders people as he drifts around doing those odd jobs, and he makes a stop to visit his friend uh, Otis Toole, who he met in prison, and Otis's sister. So he gets involved in this. He starts, you know, getting involved with his friend again, and his sister starts taking a liking to Henry, even though she knows that he went to jail for murdering his mother. Did you really kill your mama? What? Did you really kill your mama? I guess I did. How'd it happen? I stabbed her. And as the movie goes along, Otis wants to start killing people as well, so Henry kind of takes Otis under his wing and shows him how to be a serial killer. And it is a movie that shows some violent imagery, but it's also a movie that tells you less is more. Uh, there's a scene where Henry picks up this woman who's hitchhiking that has a guitar, and later on, he shows up at Otis's apartment and says, hey, I got you a present, and he gives him the guitar. We don't need to see anything from that. We know in our heads already he murdered this woman. Howdy. Hey, Henry. I brought you a present. Where did you get that? Picked it up. The scariest scene in the entire film is when it's from the point of view of a camera. It's found footage-esque where Otis and Henry are filming this home invasion, and it's frightening, but then as it goes along, it starts, the camera starts to zoom out and reveals that the home invasion is happening on a TV, and Otis and Henry are watching the murder they just committed on the TV. Scariest part of that scene is when Otis rewinds it, and then Henry asks, what are you doing? And he just says, I want to watch it again. What are you doing? I want to see it again. For me, Henry Portrait of a Serial Killer is a good introduction for people who want to get into more disturbing movies. I mean, this is a frightening horror movie, and I honestly see Henry Portrait of a Serial Killer eventually being higher on this list, but for now I thought number 15 was a perfect spot for it, so... Henry Portrait of a Serial Killer, uh, brave horror movie fans might want to give it a watch on Halloween. And if you want to get some friends together and you really want to push their limits in terms of horror, if, if you have friends that are casual horror fans and they want to watch a horror movie for Halloween, show them Henry Portrait of a Serial Killer. Just It's a way to just kind of poke at them a little bit and give them a little taste of how intense the horror genre can be. Otis, plug it in. <laughs>